teachers. What is the worst experience you have had with a student's parent? I taught first grade at a small private school. My first year I had the ultimate helicopter parent. He looked at everything and got on his child's case about everything from his test scores to the quality of his homework. He always had questions about the curriculum. My teaching methods. Etc. Etc. The child was a bit of a precocious boy. Very smart but already rebelling from being under his dad's thumb all the time. Dad would want to come in and observe the student's behavior. Dad would volunteer in the classroom but would spend most of his time critiquing his son. He'd then want to have long conferences about his son's behavior. I told him I thought his son acted out more when he was there and that I didn't think he should be in the classroom anymore and the dad's solution was to install a camera in the classroom so he could observe him without actually being there. Obviously that didn't happen. I learned a lot about setting boundaries that year. At a parent-teacher conference I had a mother say that her daughter was worthless unless she learned English better because her daughter wasn't pretty enough to amount to anything in life. The daughter was there and needed to translate for her mother several times. Edit. Mom spoke passable English enough to say most things. The daughter only translated a couple words here and there but still. Her English was better than mom's. In recent memory, I have a deaf student and her parents don't know sign language. Well. Her mom knows a little and dad knows none. At back to school night dad kept talking about how she needs to set her sights lower for her career plans. Most of the time I never hear from parents. 170 kids per year and 15 show up for back to school night type stuff. That's the worst. Parent and child had a complaint about grading on a minor assignment. Parent emailed me. The principal. Board of Education. Barack Obama. No reply from anyone. Except the principal. I once had a student hit me. I reported the student and they were suspended. Mom was adamant that I had made the whole thing up. Even though it was witnessed and there was photographic documentation of the mark it left. The next year. That student's sibling was in my class. Mom had them removed after she found out because this teacher has a clear vendetta against my children. The sibling was really upset and tried to say that I was always nice and helpful. But mom wouldn't listen. She thought I was just lulling the sibling into a false sense of security before striking. I've been screamed at by parents. But for some reason this experience was far. Far worse for me. I teach at a university. So my interaction with parents is very slight. But on a couple occasions I've had angry parents calling my office wanting to talk about why their kid isn't doing well in my class. I'm required to tell them that I'm legally not allowed to confirm or deny any student's enrollment in my class. Or discuss any student's progress in my class with anyone but the student. Which ruffles a lot of parental feathers. On one occasion. I'd said my spiel to a parent's. Gotten the usual I pay their tuition. It's my money so it's my right etc. In return. And had replied with, if you'd like to set up a proxy. You'll need to go to the registrar for a form which your son can fill out and sign. And that will allow me to talk to you. The parent totally lost their temper at that and yelled at me. He went and signed IT followed by a stream of verbal abuse and obscenities. Mostly speculating on my parentage and educational attainment. Gosh. I just have no clue why your kid doesn't want to talk to you about his grades. Sir. If you are a college student. Please be aware that your parents are not legally entitled to information about you. Even if they pay your tuition. If you are a parent of a college student. Please be aware that your kid is considered an adult by their institution. And professors aren't just being obstructionist jerks when they won't. Read. Aren't. Give you information. I got caught off guard during a conference with the parents of two students. I didn't expect it to go south because both students were doing fairly well. But did. One parent was absolutely furious that her daughter wasn't doing as well as her son. Furious with me. That is. I was obviously giving him more support than her daughter. I couldn't get her to give me any specifics about what it was she wanted me to do differently. Of course. She just wanted to lay into me about my ability to do my job. Probably the most frustrating part of being a teacher is being blamed for things that you have no control over. 
student gets a B instead of an A? You obviously taught the material poorly. Sigh. This isn't the scariest or the most serious example but this one dad pissed me off pretty badly one time. Came to drop off his two daughters and then asks me to speak to one of my fellow instructors who we shall call Sarah. We have a pretty standard policy of not offering up staff to irate parents until that staff member is given a heads up and agrees to speak with them. I gave him the standard, Sarah isn't here right now but can I help you with something and dad proceeds to explain how his 6 year old was forced to go outside during a thunderstorm the day before to look for a ring ems. Sarah had lost. He said all the other girls in his daughter's class were forced to spend a long time outside while it was raining looking for the teacher's ring and his daughter had come home covered in mud. I thought this was strange and didn't seem like something Sarah would do. Anything I imagine she would have just looked for her ring herself. I told him we would discuss it as a staff and take the appropriate action. When I talked to Sarah about the incident she was incredulous. It hadn't been raining very heavily the day before and Sarah and another staff had had all the little kids after lunch time. Normally when they would go outside and play. Sarah found a plastic pool toy shaped like a ring. Went outside to our playground and hid it. And then told the girls that they could choose between staying inside and playing board games. Or joining her outside on a quest to find the magical ring that had been tragically lost. Most kids opted for the epic quest and while it had been kinda muddy kids had a ball. They still bring it up every one in a while. I guess this particular girl either didn't really get what was going on. Or she got in trouble for being muddy and threw M's. Sarah under the bus. My guess is the latter. My mom is a teacher. And her worst was at an open house conference type thing. The two parents of a kid were getting a divorce. And apparently it was pretty rough. Both decided to go to the event that night. Well they got into a fight about something and it heated up to the point where the wife started getting physical. My mom couldn't stop them so they had to call the police. Our elementary schools don't really have conferences because there's typically no need to. So they just have a night where all the parents can show up and the teacher tries to talk to all of them. So 25 plus 8 year olds were watching two parents get into a physical fight. Not a teacher. But I've been coaching for 2 years. And I had a parent ask me to come early day to talk about their kid. I thought there was a health issue or something. So I agreed. Turned out the parent was furious that their kid wasn't allowed to compete at real meets even though they had only been diving for a few months. And it takes about 2 years to really get everything down to be able to compete. She wanted me to let her kid go to regionals the next week. A meet you have to qualify for. Well her child only knew how to do 2 dives. And you need 11 to go. Suffice to say. At the end of the session she pulled her kid out of diving to find a sport with a more immediate payoff. I had this asshole of a kid when I taught 8th grade. No matter what I called home about. His mom would make excuses and yell at me. Kid is talking. I need better classroom management. Kid is picking on others. Well. They probably bullied him first because of his weight and what was I going to do to punish them? One day. He calls me over and tells me he needs to go change his pants because his penis is so big it was like a man's. His quote, and his pants were too tight and painful. He then grabs it through his pants to show me the outline. I had to report him for sexual harassment and there was an investigation. He got removed from my class. His mom told the school that I was never allowed to speak to her son again and that the whole situation was my fault because I looked too young to be teaching 8th graders. Students whose parents work in the building, teachers, custodians, assistants, cafeteria workers, etc. are the worst. If the kid is an asshole and you tell their parent, you have to continue to work with that parent long after the kid is gone. I had a student, middle school, who was late to my class every day with a pass from his mom. I ended up having to go to the principal and have him take care of it. There's been a weird shift. Parents now see schools as a service like they would a hotel or restaurant. I work at an international school. For the most part. The students are fairly well behaved. Like anywhere else. However. There are exceptions. There was one student. Let's call him Bob. 
Bob was a very difficult student in humorous ways. He was disruptive. Lazy and rude. I had him in three different courses the same year. Near the end of the last one. I was helping him after school with an assignment. The thing was. Bob actually had some ability in math and had managed to write enough correct answers when I woke him up during tests. So he still had a chance to pass this particular course. The assignment in question was long overdue. It was more than an hour after class had ended, on a Friday. I believe, and I was just generally tired of Bob's antics and lack of effort the whole year. While I'm helping him with a problem. He turns to me and says do you ever just feel like a total failure because you're a teacher? Like. A huge failure? Me. I want to aim so much higher than that, I took a few seconds to collect myself. Bear in mind that this student was over 20 years old and was failing a grade 10 applied math class. When I was his age. I was wrapping up an honors degree. The tuition his parents were paying to keep him in school was more than my university tuition. It took all of my patience and self control to calmly explain that I didn't feel like a failure. That I enjoyed my job. And that, if he wanted to aim much higher he might have to put in a little more effort than he currently was at some point. That is my worst so far. Edit. Bob has since dropped out. One of my friends who works at a university in the geology department was contacted by a very angry parent that their son was being flunked or something. And had made some kind of challenge of, you have so many students in your class that you don't even know who any of them are. So he went to go search for the student. And found there was absolutely no record of the student having taken any of his classes. He started to worry. Because it was approaching the end of the year. And he could find absolutely no record of the student whatsoever. But the student had an ID and everything. So he did exist at the university. Later. It was found that the parent was yelling at the wrong department. The student was flunking geography. And the parent did not know the difference between the two. But most professors at the university level have a wonderful protection where unless the student has actually given permission. The professors are not allowed to speak to the parents at all on the student's behalf. And the majority of those children who have helicopter parents. Do not give any permission whatsoever for their parents to see how they are doing. I am sure they tell their parents. I have been telling them you're allowed to have access to records. I don't know what is going wrong. During my one year as a teacher. I called a parent because he was kicking other students during class. Her response. Not my little angel, I was then notified I'd be attending a conference with this parent and the principal. He called me a racist and demanded I be fired. The principal had my back. But only in private after the parent left. Mom must have told her son what she said. Because I was greeted the next day by my, almost entirely black, orchestra defending my honor. My middle school French teacher told us the story of the kid who tried to do his whole assignment by putting it through Google Translate. The teacher even asked him if he used Google Translate. He denied it. Even the parents came in and vouched for their son. The whole thing was in Spanish. Not as bad as the comments so far. But we did have a parent who likes to call and come in constantly. She found a way to mention in every sentence, as you know. My husband is a doctor, to assert authority. She hadn't done anything significant in life. I've posted this is another thread but I've had a parent deliberately make me think her child had been abducted as a test because she hated the school's child protection officer. She arranged for her daughter to be collected by a friend. Got her daughter to tell me the friend was her mum. This was in the first week of school so I was still getting to know the parents, then stormed the school office demanding to know where her daughter was. She kept it up for half an hour then admitted it had been a test and she knew exactly where she was. I'd been having visions of reading about her murder on the news and it all being my fault. I cried. I had one 5 year old who was a pain in everyone's. He would get a little goofy. Rampage. Fall still and get tired. He never remembered all that he would pull each rampage. So we couldn't really help him correct his behavior. This happened 7-10 times every day. And then one of the techers put two and two together. He was having seizures. His rampages were his body preparing his brain for the impending episode. We approached this with his mom and of this is what we noticed. 
We think it's important that he get checked way. She insisted it was evil spirits and pulled her son out of school. She taught 4th grade at the local elementary. Edit. Since people are asking. We were a small private preschool. Education laws are weird and because teachers are not doctors. We cannot diagnose and then report neglect if the parent does not follow up. We are only allowed to document what we see and approach the topic with the parent. If the parent does nothing or believes even obvious medical problems are caused by spirits. We are required by law to respect their decision. All we can do is hope to cover our own with a file on the child and hope future teachers find similar issues and tell the parent about the problem enough to convince them to seek medical help. If his issues get worse and his mom tries to come after us about never noticing. We have a clear paper trail to say we tried to help. TLDR. It got moved to a different school still lacking appropriate help because education nowadays is about respect and not facts. I once had a girl in my elective class who was struggling with her mathematics. She wasn't going to college for anything math related. I wasn't performing very well, worst in the class. I first told her that she may want to consider taking a different class during her junior year while she's still good. That way. She could return to this class as a senior if she still felt inclined to do so. As the brain matures. Ability to understand mathematics increases. Her parents went nuts. Basically taking it like I was saying her daughter was too stupid to take the class. I had emails saying how they were going to get me fired. They called and emailed the principal to try to make it happen. I had a 99% approval rating from all students. The highest in the school. They were the 1%. These were helicopter parents. Their kids got away with everything. The daughter didn't take advantage of it much. She was a sweetheart. But her son sure did. He knew he could do whatever he wanted. And if the school tried to stop him. He'd just cry foul and his parents would support him. He died driving too fast around a corner. I blame the parents. Obligatory not a teacher. But happened to one of the teachers I was close to. My music teacher senior year is the sweetest person ever. I graduated. But we're still close and talk regularly. There was a guy in my class who only took the class on the idea that he could use guitar as his instrument. Which would have been completely fine. Expect he couldn't read the sheet music and failed almost every playing test because of it. My teacher called his mom to explain why he was getting such a bad mark in the class, after constant harassments for contact throughout the year. And the woman just tore her apart and was extremely rude and disrespectful to my teacher even though she had several valid reasons for failing him in the class, x. Failed playing theory tests. Constantly talking out of turn. Disruptive. Etc. I came in on my lunch because we were getting ready for our spring concert that night and had some last minute stuff to do with several of my friends and my teacher. I walked into the music room and my poor teacher was in tears. I felt so bad for her. The shitty part about it is that the kid's mom teaches kindergarten at my old grade school. Has for years. And is still one of the nastiest people I've met. From my wife. I had a student whose parent requested a meeting with all the kids teachers before the school year. She came in with this packet called 101. The blank is the kid's name. Rather than try to fix her kid's problems. She went out of her way to write a book on all the special accommodations her kid requires trying to get teachers to focus just on him. Since none of these accommodations were official through the state. We weren't required to do any. Don't know if this is too late to comment but here goes. I'm a swimming teacher. Although this isn't majorly relevant I've had a few ridiculous experiences when working. The worst incident I had was when it was the last week of the swimming block. And as a collective all of the teachers were playing some fun games with the children, before we stopped for the week or two break. One of the kids, as I was swimming by, had been pushed off his float by another child. So I kindly picked him up to make sure he was okay. As he got to the top of the water he punched me straight in the mouth because he thought I was the one that pushed him off. I took the boy out of the water. And spoke to him saying that he shouldn't hit people in the lessons etc but he didn't seem to care. The end. When I went up to speak to his mum. The parents said to me, well. You must have deserved it. 
Let's go kid. I was so taken aback by this I had no idea what to do or say. The worst part of it was that the kid wasn't even in my class. I had this student who was diagnosed with a couple mental issues. But which in no way affected his academic abilities. He was also gifted and talented. And attended extra courses because of this. This kid had almost every adult he had ever met wrapped around his finger. I vowed not to be one of them. Basically he was a jerk. Would pull all kinds of crap. Like not doing his homework. Playing games on his school issued iPad during class. Not responding and ignoring teachers and other adults when spoken to. Lying. Manipulation of kids and adults. Basically a piece of work. His parents always took his side. They never thought it was possible that their child could have any fault. So. Whenever he was written up, sent to the office, they would email or call that evening to complain. By the time he got to my classroom. This had been going on for years. The administration had all but given up because the parents were that exhausting. I was writing this kid up nearly once a week all year. If it were any other kid. He would have probably been suspended multiple times and possibly removed from the school. But because the parents were such huge pains. The school couldn't deal anymore. So he got away with murder essentially. It was extremely exhausting and frustrating. But I never stopped. I refused to back down on this kid or his parents. Even after the principals had all but told me nothing was going to happen. This kid is going nowhere fast and it pisses me off to no end to know that it is almost entirely his parents fault in this case. I was a teacher for a bit. And quickly came to regret it. I was out once with my girlfriend at the time when a parent came up to me and told me I shouldn't be out. It was setting a bad example for the students. I don't understand. It was the summer. I was down the shore away from the town I worked in. My girlfriend was wearing a tank top and I had a t-shirt. No student would want to see their teacher during the off time. The parent kept pressing though. Eventually demanding that I be removed because I was a bad influence. He was raving for a while. I eventually got an email from my boss saying he needed to talk to me. Apparently I was going to bars and picking up young looking women. So I was being investigated. I just sighed and went on whatever. My girlfriend was older than me actually. Nothing came up with the investigation and the mother went on a huge rant when she saw me still wandering the school the following year. This was a while ago. But I've since lost the passion to teach and any kind of faith in the education system. May get lost but this has to be told. Girl of 14 I will call her Rosie, is violent towards students and staff. This is not simply kicking and hitting others, rough area, this is throwing tables. Cutting off a girl's hair. Smashing a window. Kicking in a door. You name the offense and she has most likely done it. Her brother was expelled for similar behavior so her mom was not happy with the school. Also before the questions, we would expel but schools have rules regarding numbers of exclusions and we reached ours. Yes there are ways to do it but the school don't like how it looks. Anyway one incident occurred last month where this girl videoed herself beating up her 11 year old as a joke. There was no reason given she apparently thought the girl found it funny. The girl had to be taken to hospital to check that the knock to the head was not serious. So Rosie is temporarily excluded. Mum comes in to discuss the event and is arguing Rosie's case. Explaining that the girls were joking. We have CCTV and video and Rosie's mom insists the CCTV missed the joke. Anyway a strongly worded. Handwritten but photocopied letter arrives on my desk, and three others. May I add that I was simply one of Rose's teachers I was not street the incident or the meeting not have any control in school policy. But the letter threatens to sue us. But not for unfair suspension. Mother Rose's mum has found through her extensive research that we have two strict bullying rules and policy that is discrimination and that Rosie was a victim of rigid policy on bullying. As far as complaints go. I don't think anything can now shock me. Probably going to get buried. I had a student in my class who quite obviously cheated off another student on a quiz. I had my principal's backing and decided to not write the kid up. Just have her come in for a lunch detention and write an apology letter for academic dishonesty. I was also going to let her take the quiz during the lunch detention. The kid seemed cool with this punishment, 
if you even want to call it that, and went on with her day. So the next morning she comes to me and hands me a dirty receipt with a note from her parents scribbled on the back. It said I don't appreciate how you treat my kid. You need to drop everything you're doing and call me now. Or I'll make sure you never teach again. Um, okay. So I go on with my morning. I'll call this disgruntled parent during my plan hour. So I finally get around to calling at around 10am. The parent picks up and sounds like I just woke them up. She then proceeds to call me a petty and tells me her kid is smarter than me. Would never in a million years cheat. And will not be coming to lunch detention for something there's no way she did. She told me her daughter has such bad vision she can't read a foot in front of her and she couldn't have copied off the other student. And continues to cuss at me and belittle me. She ended up hanging up on me after telling me to never call their house again or she would file a police report for harassment. Even though she told me to call her. Sigh. I had a mother complain that I didn't give enough homework. Even though I was giving her kid. After a special request. Extra homework. The kid in question however. Never did any of his homework. Either the day the parent of one of my 5th graders broke into the locked staff parking lot and stole a teacher's car in the middle of the school day, or the father who broke into the school one weekend, with his 8 and 10 year olds in tow, sold 2 TVs and trashed 3 classrooms. Edit. Wording. I had a parent who said I have 3 kids and my kids have never lied in their lives. My administrator and I ended the conference after this statement because we realized the parent was delusional and we were wasting our time. This parent also signed each email dr. Comma. But she never used punctuation and had a tendency misspell words left and right. Her email signature indicated she had a doctorate in education. I had actually taught all three of her kids at one time or another. All three kids were lazy and never participated in class or completed assignments. This parent would email every day about something and it eventually got to the point I stopped replying to the emails or just forwarded the emails to the principal saying I'm not responding to this because I have already explained this multiple times. And I wasn't the only teacher who received this treatment. Every teacher who had one of her kids had to deal with this behavior. I teach in a very affluent school district. And as a project I had my students bring in wrapped gifts for homeless students. The wrapped gifts would be given to any kids at the shelter if it happened to be their birthday. To cover all the bases. Since it is a public school and illegal for me to require parents to give money for anything. I created a permission slip saying the project was optional. And sent an email explaining the details. While giving students and parents the opportunity to opt out. After school I checked my email and one of the parents decided it was a good idea to hit reply all and go on about how this was a ridiculous project and a waste of class time. In the email she said things like, in our house we don't really celebrate birthdays like they are a big deal, and this kind of political stuff doesn't belong in the classroom, of course the other parents were quick to respond with quite a few remarks about how she was acting foolish for being a very well off person complaining about doing a charitable thing for homeless children. This upset her and her response was to contact the superintendent and file a complaint for requiring her son to donate to a local shelter. Luckily I had the email. And the other parents as backup. Otherwise who knows what might have happened. As a result though the superintendent asked that I scrap the project going forward. Interestingly. The son had also just written a personal narrative essay about getting to skip school on a Friday to go to Disneyland for his birthday. For open house I made sure to display all the students best writing on a bulletin board. And sure enough that essay was front and center. I got yelled at for 30 montes straight by a mom because her kid failed my senior English class. I emailed her constantly. We have an online portal where you can check grades. He started skipping a lot. I notified her. And she didn't even know he wasn't at school. He didn't turn in a final project and I told her that. And she told me not to give him a second chance. When he failed. It was my fault. After that I learned my lesson. If a parent is aggressive. I need to say this meeting is no longer productive. Thank you for your time and walk out. I was yelled at for an hour for not giving an A to a student. This is quite common since I teach AP Physics. 
What's uncommon is that this mother was pissed because she promised her son in first grade that if he got an A in every class they would buy him a car when he graduated. Nice way to prioritize education. Lady. I teach for others to learn not to get a letter. When I told her if you wanted him to get straight A's. Why didn't you just enroll him in an underwater basket weaving class? The STFU pretty quick. The A student was making a C. Because she didn't turn in any assignments. My principal sent her mother down to my room after school one day without notifying me. So the mom bursts into my room. And demands that I change her daughter's grade. She was unwilling to even let me get a word in edgewise. Ranting and raving and reeking of booze. I also noticed she was swaying on her feet. So I slowly edged around her and got out of the room and started heading to the principal's office. But she followed me. Still ranting and raving. Cue the principal, finally, coming out her office. At proceeding to ask me if it was possible to change the student's grade. After all. I stood there in shock. And said I'd sort it out. As the mother and my principal seemed to be pretty good friends. I ended up lodging a complaint that my safety was put at risk. But nothing came of it, done. Damn. This probably won't be seen but. This wasn't technically the worst. It was ridiculous and I'll never forget it. This was at a middle school, I teach 6th grade. Had to meet with both parents due to behavioral issues. And instead of going up to my room they just wanted to stand in the office and talk it out. The mom was pissed to her kid and dad was just kind of there. Looking at his phone almost the whole time. One of the secretaries in the office was sitting behind us at this time. I looked over at her briefly and she had the most horrified face and was look at the back of the parents. She just sat there with this same look until they left. Apparently the dad was watching on his phone the entire time. And the secretary could see it very clearly. I acted mortified until I left the office and then I just laughed my off. Kind of bad and sad at the same time. Out of control kid, cursing at teachers. Threw a metal trash can at a classmate. The latest reason was him not doing any work. And screaming you. You can't tell me what to do when I asked him to do his assigned work. This was an elective computer class. So one would expect that he'd like the subject. Screamed that phrase over and over again like a parrot as I walked him to the counselor. Parents are asked to come in because he's clearly lost it. Stepdad shows up clearly pissed. But also clearly young. Like maybe 10 years older than this kid. Perhaps less. After hearing all that has transpired. Stepdad says it is easier to just let him do what he wants. His mom and I do. I'll give the lead counselor credit because he quickly went from talking to the kid about behavior to talking to the parent about effective ways to parent. Teaching HS. And had a kid plagiarize an essay. His parents complained to principal. And I was forced to let him raid do the assignment. He had one week to complete a five paragraph essay. Fast forward to a week later. When the kid, of course, blows off the assignment. It's a Friday. So I go home for the weekend. At 4pm. I get a call from the school. Saying that the kid and his parents were at the school with the essay. Asking to see me. Um. Nope. Not driving back to school to hear your nonsense. Coincidentally student lived down the street from my parents and had seen me there from time to time after i refused to come back to the school the kid's mother went to my parents house and tried to get my dad to give her my phone number and address so she could drop off the essay to me i'm not a teacher but my sister is for her it was knowing a student whose dad was abusive i think what made it worse was the fact that the child in question reminded her of her own and how they talked and the gestures they made father was eventually kicked out by the mother. My gradual thesis advisor still gets calls from parents asking him to change their, grown, child's grade. Yes. In graduate school. In a highly ranked program. I guess some people never stop having mommy and daddy wipe their, 